And then I want you to explain why the search sometimes knows what I mean and sometimes doesn't. I right, bet. So you know when you're searching for romantic movies on Netflix because you're atrociously down bad? <laughs> She left me, man. Get yourself together. Basically, Netflix doesn't look for those exact words. It understands that you want emotional dramas. It understands you want to feel something. That's because your search actually hits an embedding model first. Could be open AIs, could be Googles, could be Netflix own one. It converts your text into a vector, which is basically a string of numbers that represents the meaning of the word. Okay, so what determines how many numbers are in that list? That is the dimension. Like this, or this, or this numbers long. Higher dimensions captures more nuance. So car and automobile and vehicle all end up close together on the number space. But more dimensions means more memory and slower searches. Got it, so where do the vectors actually get stored? They go into a vector database like Pinecone. The important thing to note is that the database doesn't learn the meaning. It just specializes in finding vectors fast with the approximate nearest neighbor search. How does it determine what is similar though? Cosine similarity. So when you search again, your vector becomes a new query. The database compares your vector to all the other vectors and measures the angle between them. If the angle is small, so the cosine value is closest to one, that means the vectors are similar in meaning. That's how you know that car and automobile are related. What else can you do beyond basic search? Well, you got semantic search for meaning, RAG where you actually fetch context for AI answers, hybrid search that combines keywords and meanings, or multimodal for search through images or text. This is not bad at all. Where are you learning this stuff? Oh yeah, I just go to learn.nextweek.org and do a bunch of hands-on projects. I'd recommend doing the RAG series. It's a banger. Hmm.